Let's be real. Searching files with the Explorer or Finder is like using the Internet Explorer. Dear people of the internet, it's 2022. So why should we use something that's both slow and unreliable if there is a way faster solution out there? The solution is called Eagle, and I think the name fits the app very well. Searching in Eagle is basically like an explorer or finder, but on steroids. When I founded my first business WebAssense a couple of years ago, I created several icons for my website. I know for sure that I included the name and the file names, so they must be somewhere on this hard disk. Let's start the search in Explorer first. Okay, looks like this might take a while, but what about Eagle? Over 100,000 files and we're done in just a second, while the Explorer is still searching for it. Well, maybe next year, but I definitely won't be waiting for it. Okay guys, as you can see this piece of software is something very special and when I first found out about the Eagle app I honestly wished I would have known about it earlier as it would have saved me so much time and headache whenever I was organizing and searching through my photos, videos, documents, whatever. And of course just searching like that isn't Eagle's only feature. So let's dive into how everything works before I show you a few more examples of how you could and in my opinion definitely should implement Eagle in your day to day workflow. By the way I got a small surprise for you at the very end of this video, so stay tuned for that. The first time I installed Eagle on my computer, I was a little confused because it wasn't working the same way as the Explorer or Finder. You can't simply use Eagle to browse through the files on your computer, you have to import them first. When I realized that Eagle was duplicating all of the files during this import process, I was kind of disappointed at first because I didn't want all of my files to sit on my storage twice, once inside of my own folder structure and once inside of the Eagle library. And it looks like I am not the only one who had that thought. Before I wrote this script, I was looking into some other other videos about the Eagle app and quite a few people were concerned by this duplicating process. Now you might be asking yourself why even bother then and why make a video about Eagle anyways? Trust me, I thought the exact same thing, but I couldn't have been more wrong. This structure is actually a lot more powerful than what we have in Explorer or Finder for various reasons that I wasn't able to fully wrap my head around at first. But let me give you a quick explanation so that you can get a better idea of why that unique structure is actually a good thing. Whenever you import something into Eagle, this file is put in its own folder. Eagle then creates a thumbnail for a faster viewing experience and a metadata file, which is automatically filled with information about that specific file. This is the reason why Eagle is so insanely fast compared to the Explorer, for example. And it is also the reason why you can search for specific colors and other media properties out of the box. During this import process, Eagle automatically identifies duplicates and asks you whether you want to create a soft link, which is awesome because that allows you to save files in multiple folders without actually creating duplicates of these files inside of your Eagle library. All of this is a game changer and here's why. Whenever I work on video projects in DaVinci Resolve, I have to be cautious about not moving any files because that might lead to missing media and a lot of headache due to relinking. This is a thing of the past for me with Eagle because every single file inside of my Eagle library has a static physical location, which doesn't change even if I decide to move that file to another folder inside of my Eagle library. Now this this is just perfect and I can't tell you how much I love this feature. I can also add tags, comments, etc. and the file stays in the same location. I love it and if you frequently work on videos, I'm sure you will love it too. Another fact on videos that you'll definitely like is that you can choose a custom thumbnail to display inside of your Eagle library. This is especially helpful when the automatically created thumbnail is not showing the most important action. Whenever you import music, Eagle automatically creates a waveform, which is really useful when it comes to choosing the right title for a video, and the same applies for sound effects. Just hovering over these items will give you a quick preview, and you can click anywhere to jump to a specific part of a song or sound effect. Eagle supports many file types and allows you to play music, videos and GIFs in Eagle's own native player, which also has some neat features like slower or faster playback for things like slow motion or time-lapse videos. You can also import and view fonts directly inside of Eagle and activate or deactivate them from there. As you can see, the options are just endless.
Now that you understand why it is worth it to import all of your files into Eagle, let's talk about the duplicate files and why you should just delete all the files that were previously sitting in your Explorer or Finder after importing these into Eagle. Using Eagle is very flexible and doesn't mean that you're entering a one-way street where you can't simply turn around again. Let me explain why. If you decide that you no longer want to use Eagle, you can always export all of your files in a human readable format and return to the Explorer or Finder again. You have to be cautious about how you import your data though. If you just drag and drop all the files in one folder inside of your Eagle library, exporting afterwards will create a huge mess because all of the files will be sitting in the same folder. Eagle does respect your folder structure if you drag and drop entire folders to the navigation sidebar though. By doing this, you will preserve all of your files in their previous folders and can export everything just like it was before if you ever need it outside of Eagle again. If you're collaborating with other Eagle users, you can also export something called Eagle Pack. The great thing about Eagle Packs is the fact that all the metadata is exported too, so that your partner can easily access all of the tags and other metadata that you have previously created. And if you fully swap to using Eagle, there's one more feature to make your life a lot easier when working with the app, which is called auto importing. By enabling this option, Eagle creates a folder for you, which has subfolders for every single one of your libraries. Now you can drop any file into that folder and it will be imported into your Eagle library automatically. The great thing about this is that it won't create any duplicates. After importing the pasted file into Eagle, it will be deleted from that import folder automatically. This is really great because some programs like Photoshop don't allow you to save your exported files directly inside of Eagle. But with this neat little feature, this shouldn't be a problem at all. If you're a fan of the Windows snipping tool, you'll love to hear that Eagle has its own version of that, which has some nice additional features. You can add rectangles, circles and arrows, which is super nice to put an emphasis on something. On top of that, you can use a brush or marker as well as regular text and even blur parts you don't want to be visible. The mosaic feature is actually my favorite because it saves me a lot of time as I don't have to import the screenshots into Photoshop first. As if all of this wasn't enough to just go ahead and install Eagle already, there's even more great stuff. If you install the Eagle browser extension, you will be able to quickly save and import images into your library by a drag and drop feature, which I am a huge fan of. You can also just alt and right click on images or GIFs to save files quickly. But if you're an old school kind of person, you can of course just right click on an image and use the context menu too. Although all of these functions are pretty fast already, if you need to save a bunch of images from a website for let's say inspiration, there's an even better feature which is called batch save. And by the way, you can also use shortcuts for all of the following functions. If you press Alt 1 on a web page, Eagle will show you a list of all the downloadable images on that website. You can use a resolution or file type filter to quickly find your desired items, click on them, hit import and it's done. You can also capture a whole web page or just a visible part that you can currently see. One more feature that I really like is Capture Area, which does not only allow you to choose a specific part yourself, if you hold down Ctrl or Command, it will automatically select the container you are hovering above, which is great for saving small buttons and things where you would have to tediously adjust the bounds yourself. Instead of just capturing images, Eagle also allows you to capture entire URLs and view them inside of Eagle. One great thing about this is that you can save links to YouTube videos and view them directly inside of Eagle without actually downloading the video. Keep in mind though that you can only view these if you have an internet connection. I still think that this is a nice feature as you can save a collection for inspiration directly inside of your local system. Now that you know how the Eagle app works, let's talk about who Eagle is not for. I think that Eagle is the perfect companion for basically everyone. There are some rare cases though where Eagle might lead to problems because of its unique folder structure, so let's talk about that first to get it out of the way. If your project relies on a specific folder structure, which is usually the case with things like web development or coding in general, it wouldn't really make sense to use Eagle as that would mess with that system and lead to problems. You can of course still use the app to organize your media assets, but you shouldn't import your entire project with things like HTML, CSS or JavaScript files as that would definitely lead to issues. This however is the only case that came to my mind where Eagle might not be the right tool for the job. For everything else, Eagle is just great. But let me give you a few more examples of how I integrated Eagle into my day-to-day -day workflow and how you can too. First, I want you to look at my library of over 15,000 individual icons here. 
Let's say that I want to quickly find icons with red color, square aspect ratio and SVG file type. Just look how fast that is. And what's even better is the fact that this type of information is created by Eagle automatically and saved inside of that metadata file which we've just talked about. Eagle is also automatically capturing metadata for things like ratings, import and modification date, dimensions, video duration, size and a lot more. You can also add comments and notes to individual files which is really helpful when you're working with a team. Notes are pretty basic but let me show you how comments work. When I work on things like logos, I often just use one Photoshop or Illustrator document to sketch out some ideas. Let's take a look at this PSD file for example. One great thing is that you don't need to open up Photoshop, you can just view the file inside of Eagle. You can toggle comment mode by pressing C here to see all the comments. Moving your mouse over these boxes will show you what comments I have made. But you can also just take a look at the inspector on the right side here to see all comments on this file. If you hover over an item here, it will show you where that comment is. I'll add another comment comment right here about the creator of this document real quick. This allows me to use the comment filter and even search for specific comments as you can see right here. And by the way, to clear filters quickly, you can just right click on them. On top of your regular folders, which by the way are called categories in Eagle, you can always create your own tags in different groups and use colors and emojis to quickly differentiate between them. Let me give you another example here with real photos and videos so that you can see how powerful that is. I have created different groups for the countries that the media was created in and the people that you can see in that picture or video. I can simply double click on a tag to show all images with that specific tag or choose multiple combinations with inclusions and exclusions, which is really nice. You can also filter using tags and the methods we've talked about before, which makes the Eagle app a very flexible tool indeed. But to give you a concrete example, let's say I am searching for photos that were taken in Portugal and I want two of our friends, my wife and myself to be visible in these photos. Since we have previously tagged all of the images from Portugal, we can quickly find all of the photos with these tags. The way Eagle is tagging files is insanely powerful because you can always rename tags afterwards and all of your files will adapt accordingly. And if you find yourself using the same filters over and over again, there's another feature that you'll want to know about. Smart folders can combine multiple filters and show all the corresponding files with a single click. You have to set them up depending on your needs though. One thing I really like is that you can create groups here, which makes organizing really easy. I have created smart folders for things like focal length and aperture, but there's a whole lot more that you can do with this. After clicking on a smart folder, you can still use additional filters. So they're basically working like search or filter presets. I could go on and on here, but I think you get the point. This won't be my last video about Eagle, but it should give you a good overview of what you can do with the app. By now, you should have realized that I am quite hyped about this app, which is currently available for both Windows and Mac OS. And I would even go so far and say that this could replace the Explorer or Finder for some of you guys, as it is just so much faster. The user interface is very intuitive, the app is fairly stable, and here comes the best part, there is a 30-day trial and Eagle is a one-time payment of only $29.95 for two devices. Take that, Adobe. Now, I understand that all of this might sound like an ad to you, but I can reassure you that while I was searching for a digital asset management tool like this, I didn't find anything that was anywhere close to what Eagle has to offer. And that's why I am so excited about this and want to share it with you guys. While I was writing the script for this video, I reached out to the Eagle team and was able to negotiate a special deal for my viewers. And if you're interested in a discount that's even higher than their educational discount of 30% on top of this insanely cheap price already, make sure to sign up for my newsletter, which you can find in the description down below. And I'll make sure that you receive the special deal. This discount is limited to a specific number of people though, so it is worth it to be as fast as possible. I bought an Eagle license from my own money by the way, so yeah, this video is completely sponsored by me and I didn't get any compensation for the creation of this video other than that special deal that I have negotiated for you guys. And if you want to support me, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel or sign up for my newsletter on my website to get more great recommendations like these in the future. Other than that, I really hope this video was helpful for you or at least entertaining. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.